It's taken our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, quite a few years to learn how to get along with her principal, Osgood Conklin. But lately, even in his more difficult moods, he's found ways of getting around him. Yes, and one of the best ways is up the fire escape on the other side of the building. <laughs> this is the route I took to class most of last week, when our beloved principal was on one of his infamous economy drives. This newest campaign was particularly ill-timed since Mr. Boynton badly needed new equipment for his laboratory and since I badly needed Mr. Boynton a uh, new desk uh, <laughs> I was pretty depressed. For three days, my landlady saw the gloom gathering and Thursday morning at breakfast, she tried to dispel it. Connie, don't you want to let me hear about your problem? I'd love to, Mrs. Davis, but it's really nothing you can help me with. Well, all right, dear. If you don't choose to discuss it, I certainly won't try. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. I think I'd better keep this to myself. Just as you say. But I know if it were me, I'd want to tell someone about Mr. Conklin's economy drive and how it's going to affect Mr. Boynton getting his new laboratory equipment and you getting new desks in your classroom. <laughs> As I say, I think I'd better keep this to yourself. <laughs> Mrs. Davis, how did you find out about it? Well, dear, when I went in to awaken you this morning, you were talking about it in your sleep. How did I sound? Clear as a bell. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I didn't confuse you by mumbling. Mr. Conklin's newest economy drive is designed to convince the state examiner that he can splash our school budget when he visits Madison today. Well, there's no point in worrying about it this minute, is there? Dear, dear, why not read the comic? It'll take your mind off things for a while. No, thanks, Mrs. Davis. I have enough tragedy in my own life. <laughs> well, you don't mind if I glance at the news on the front page, do you? No, indeed. That'll give me a perfect chance to look at the want ads on the back page. Same <laughs> <laughs> mm. old thing. War, crime, and... Oh, kind of. It's him. It's this picture right here on the front page. He's sick. Kind of, he's out. He's out. William Dodson is out. I had no idea he was in. <laughs> He's William Godfrey. Oh, that's right. You wouldn't know. It happened before you came here. Well, if William Dobson was a crook, a housebreaker, and Mr. Conklin was involved in the case. Mr. Conklin? Yes. You see, this man Dobson was convicted of armed robbery and they sent him to prison for ten years. I see. And they made Mr. Conklin principal of Madison High. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Conklin was foreman of the jury which convicted Donston. The jury was split 11 to 1 for releasing him, but gradually Mr. Conklin convinced them all of his point of view. It sounds like the jury was made up of his faculty. <laughs> but why get so excited, Mrs. Davis? Well, Dobson claimed he was innocent, and when he heard what had happened, he swore as soon as he got out. He'd find Mr. Conklin and Terry. And he got out yesterday. Yeah. The story says he was paroled yesterday. Well, he'll have to hurry if he wants to do us any good. <laughs> Honey, this is no laughing matter. Look at this picture of Mr. Dobson. Look at that thick black hair and those eyebrows, that menacing scowl, that long scar down the side of his face. Does this look like the face of a man who wouldn't use a gun? This looks like the face of a man who wouldn't have to use a gun. <laughs> scary victim to death. <laughs> but Mrs. Davis, all this happened many years ago. Dodson's certainly forgotten about his threat by now, anyway. Well, that's probably Walter to drive you to school. Come on in, Walter. I'd better go out and get the boys some breakfast. Greetings, Miss Brooks, on this one of the blackest days in Madison's annals. <laughs> What's the matter, Walter? Our football team has had to suspend practice. Why, Walter? No coach? No football. <laughs> I couldn't think of a better reason if I tried all winter. 
certainly Mr. Conklin's economy drive hasn't been carried that far. Oh, farther. Harriet tells me the only reason Mr. Conklin's doing it is so the state examiner can see that Madison can operate on a reduced budget while he's here today. Uh, what would happen to the budget if Mr. Conklin never saw the examiner? I suppose it would remain the same. Oh, well, something's got to be done. Why, things have gotten so bad, even the school custodian quit yesterday. The school custodian? Yeah, Mr. Conklin cut his salary from $50 a week to 35 uh, plus all the coal he could carry home. <laughs> How was he going to get any man to work for 35 bucks unless the fellow's desperate? Or been out of work for years? Or just out of prison? Huh? I think I've got a little idea that will answer our purpose just as well as an accident. It merely involves frightening our principal a bit. You mean tear him out of his wits at first? No, Walter. Just out of school for a day or two. <laughs> but, Daddy, how far can you carry your economy program? Watch me. <laughs> done solely for the benefit of my school. But this year's budget provides... Harriet, this year's budget is subject to revision as soon as Mr. Monaghan arrives this afternoon. However, right now, I have the more pressing problem of replacing our school custodian. Well, that's part of what I'm saying, Daddy. Well, the idea of offering a man $35 and all the coal he can carry home. <laughs> Where are you going to get a man for that? Well, you may have a point there, child. Perhaps my offer is a bit low. Well, of course it is. Well, if I get a really good man, I'll make it all the coal both he and his wife can carry. <laughs> I were a betting man. <laughs> <laughs> I just leave, but... Come in. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Morning, Harriet. Oh, hi, Miss Brooks. Harriet was just on her way out, Miss Brooks. Oh, but Daddy, Ms. I... Miss Brooks, will you kindly say Harriet just left? Harriet just left? Thank you. <laughs> Now, Harriet, you wouldn't want to make a liar out of Miss Brooks. <laughs> oh, all right. Bye, Miss Brooks. Bye, Harriet. I know. Oh, Mr. Johnson, do you know the man? 
Man, he's what killed me. I was standing as a jury that sent him to jail for ten years, seven years ago. Wait a minute. He can't be out of jail yet. He can't. He can't. William Dodson, the ex-convict, news of his release would be in the book. Probably right on the front page. Now, you can see it. But I haven't read this morning, maybe yet. Well, I have it right here on my desk. Oh, let's see now. Nothing but the usual stuff. War, crime. He forces him! I recognize that face anywhere. Thick black hair, bushy eyebrows, menacing scowl. Maybe it's John L. Lewis. William <laughs> Dodson is out. He's been paroled. What am I going to do, Miss Brooks? He wants to kill me. Now oh, help me, Miss Brooks. Please help me. Think of something. Think of anything. Well, there's one thing you could do, Miss Thompson. Get out of town. Or better still, get out of the state. Good idea, Mr. Good idea. I'll get out of the state. That's it. Dodson wouldn't dare kill you in another state. It would be a violation of his parole. <laughs> <laughs> I'll grab the first train. Well, there's no time to lose. I'll leave the one. It's a finest book. I'll see you when this blows over. Well, that works even better than I thought it would. Now, Mr. Conklin, how was your trip? <laughs> Just what was I thinking of? I can't leave now. What about my new budget? Oh, take it with you by all means. Give me something to read on the train. No, 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 you don't understand. Mr. Lonergan will be here at three to go over with me. It's his only day in town. I can't disappoint him. But you can't disappoint me either. That is, uh, what about Dodson? Well, I, I, I'll keep putting most of the day in the book. And when you see Dodson, tell him the job is filled. Tell him one false move, and he'll be back up the river. Yes, sir, but I hope he gets here before three. Why? Because after that, I'll be up the creek. <laughs> well, Mr. Conklin decided he would remain in school, but in hiding, until the state examiner arrived that afternoon. He kept himself so well hidden, in fact, that none of us had the slightest idea where he was. That is, until I had occasion to go into the female faculty room to relax for a few moments. I <laughs> <laughs> picked the softest, most comfortable armchair I could find and flopped into it. <laughs> you both get off me, this <laughs> Well, by noon, when I went down to pick up Mr. Boynton for lunch, I was a bit more wary. When I entered his laboratory, however, I was due for one more shot. Mr. Boynton's face looked as if he was made up for any man on the minstrel show. Of course, he had a ready explanation. I ran into Mr. Conklin, Miss Brooks. Where? Inside the furnace? <laughs> he gave me the task of sending the furnace when I ran into him in the infirmary. The infirmary? Yes, he signaled for me from under the bed. <laughs> I know what he was doing under there. Well, those springs have needed counting for weeks. <laughs> it's just another hiding place of his, Mr. Interlocutor. Uh, Mr. Boynton. <laughs> really? I thought Walter was exaggerating when he told me how you frightened him this morning. Imagine Mr. Conklin worrying about one insignificant paroled prisoner. Particularly when he's got so many unparoled ones on his own faculty. <laughs> But unfortunately, he wasn't frightened enough to leave school. Well, the scheme almost worked, Miss Brooks. But I can't understand any man being so frightened of anyone else. I can frankly say I fear no man. I know. You concentrate on women. <laughs> Here, you'd better use my mirror and wipe the soot off your face, Mr. Boynton. Oh, yes. Thanks, Miss Brooks. Hey, will you look at me? I really do look like an end man in a minstrel show. All I need is some lipstick around my mouth, and the disguise will be complete. If that's an offer, I accept. <laughs> that is, it would, wouldn't it? Now, if you're through, Mr. Boynton, we'd better be on our way to lunch. Well, if you don't mind, Miss Brooks, I'd like to clean out my rabbit cage before I go. Better look inside first. Mr. Conklin may be hiding in there. <laughs> 
But as in his frame of mind, there must be some way of frightening him out of school before three. I don't see how, Miss Brooks, unless William Dodson actually did appear. And that sort of thing simply doesn't happen. Except to Gary Cooper. <laughs> well, forget about the rabbit cage and let's go to lunch. All right. After you, Miss Brooks. Uh, excuse me. Yes? I'm looking for a guy named Osgood Conklin. I tried in his office, but they didn't know where he was. Would either of you know? Why, yes. If you take a right at the first ash can, then a left at the next infirmary bed, then go straight ahead, you may find him in one of the drain pipes. <laughs> huh? Uh, <laughs> we don't know where he is either. No, we haven't decided that. But pardon me, but you look awfully familiar. Haven't I seen your face somewhere before? It's possible, uh, if you looked over this morning's paper. Oh, I looked over it, but you're definitely not Mrs. Davis. However, <laughs> 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 I'm sure I... The morning paper. Of course. You're William Dodson. That's right. William Dodson. Oh, don't shoot. Please don't shoot. I'll do anything you say, only please don't shoot. Read your publicity. Shoot Mr. Conklin. Mr. <laughs> Conklin? Oh, no. You got me all wrong. Why, I haven't even got a gun. No gun? What are you going to do? Poison him? Strangle him? Stab him with a knife? Don't make it anything too messy. He cut the cleaning woman's salary, and we wouldn't want to lose her, too. <laughs> what method do you intend to use? Strangling? Poisoning? Hmm? Hmm? What method? <laughs> Ladies, the only reason I'm here is to thank Mr. Conklin. Now, that's a method I would never have thought of. <laughs> thank him? You're here to thank him? But he's the man who convinced the whole jury that you were guilty. I know. And I'll be grateful to him as long as I live. If I wasn't so fascinated, I'd think. <laughs> but how could you possibly be grateful to him for sending you to jail? Oh, lady, you don't know what it's like. For the first time, I was living a good, clean life. Good food, plenty of exercise. I had absolutely no worries. My hours were regular, my time my own. I got loads of rest. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, you know any good banks we could stick up? <laughs> but in spite of all that, you were in prison. Yes, and it was Mr. Conklin who put you there. And you did threaten to shoot him when you got out. Lady, that was when I was still a crook with no education. <laughs> well, you know, I even went to high school while I was in prison. I knew it. That ruins most people. <laughs> you certainly got a lot more out of it than most people. Uh, well, if you're so determined to thank him, Mr. Dodson, uh, could you please put it off until tomorrow? That's it. Threaten him today and thank him tomorrow. <laughs> look, look, I, I don't even know what you two are talking about, but I've been waiting seven long years to thank Mr. Conklin, and today's the day I'm going to do it, just as soon as I can find him. Then find him you will, Mr. Dodson, and I know Mr. Boynton will be delighted to help you. I will? Yes, I just recalled Mr. Conklin saying he was going down to the boiler room to speak to the new school custodian. You know, Mr. Boynton, the room with the big heavy door with the big lock. Oh, oh yes, the boiler room. Uh, come on, Mr. Dodson, I'll take you down there. Well, thanks, but I won't be putting you out, will I? Oh, I don't mind putting myself out a little. No, indeed, particularly when it's more important to put someone else in. <laughs> Would the state examiner do any minute and Dodson locks in the locker room? It's the only chance we've got, Walter. Yeah, but if this doesn't get Mr. Conklin out of school, what are we going to do, Miss Brooks? I may consider blasting. We've <laughs> got <laughs> to do the trick, particularly if Mrs. Davis and Mr. Boynton come through as hoped for. Oh, I'm sure they will. Well, here we are. Now, are you certain the invisible man, uh, Mr. Conklin, is in his office? <laughs> oh, I can't be positive, Miss Brooks. But five minutes ago, I did see someone sneak in in Miss Enright's coat and hat. That's Mr. Conklin. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Well, I could have sworn he was in there. Oh, he's in there. It's just difficult to hear anything from under the desk. <laughs> I'll go in. Oh, okay. Good luck, Miss Brooks. Mr. Conklin. 
Mr. Conklin. Oh, oh, it's you, Miss Wood. Goodness, I almost wrenched my back leaping under the desk. <laughs> the moment I thought it was you know who. Well, that's what I came in to see you about, sir. You know who, uh, Dodson is coming. I'm going. <laughs> Where did you speak to him, Mr. I finally spoke to him on the phone not two minutes ago. I told him he was fired, but he didn't take it at all well. What do you mean? He said he'd be right over to kill you. You yeah. better leave at once, sir. Oh, I want to, Mr. Cook, but Mr. Lonergan will be here in a minute, and he expects to see me. Carlton, Carlton, forgive me for breaking in like this, sir, but get out as quick as you can. Flee for your life. He's in the building. He's in the building? Who's in the building? Who? That's who? Uh, it's Dodson, Mr. Carter. Yes, sir. Get out while you still can. It was all I could do to get here ahead of him to warn you. But, but Miss Brooks only spoke to him on the phone two minutes ago, Boynton. He was probably calling from the corner drugstore. you better get out at once, sir. Oh, yes, 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 at once. You, you didn't tell him the truth about where I was, did you, Boynton? Oh, I had to, sir. He forced me to at the point of a gun, Mr. Conklin. At the point of a gun? Then it's true he's got a gun. If he's headed this way, I can't get out in time. Quick, lock the door. Never mind, never mind. I'll do it, I'll do it. Here. Here. Leave that order hold it for a little while. All right, Conklin, you laugh. <laughs> Seven long years for this. Open up. I've got six bullets. And they've all got your name on them. <laughs> oh, don't worry, sir. These three are bound to miss. It's the law of averages. Please, Mr. Dodson, please, I beseech you. Don't kill our principal. It's only one life to you, but hundreds of our kids depend on him. The <laughs> Lord is begging for your life, sir. What do you expect? That idiot Denton's always begging for something. <laughs> hey, big boy, big, big. Oh, hey. uh, get away from me, kid. This is where Conklin gets it. All right, Conklin. If you won't open up, I'll get a fire axe and break the door down. And do. He's going to get an axe and break the door down. This I got to see. <laughs> Now's your chance, sir. My chance? While he's away, you can escape through your inner office. Oh, yes, yes. I never thought of that. Through my inner office. I'll leave it once. Yes. Uh, hello, Mr. Conklin. Remember me, William Dotson? Oh, no. But I'm sorry. I haven't time now to renew old acquaintances. <laughs> There's a maniac on the loose outside, and he's a... William Dodson! Please don't shoot! Please don't shoot! I beg of you, please don't shoot me! Look, Mr. Conklin, I don't know what this is all about, but I'm not here to kill you. Not, not here to kill me? But you were threatening me a minute ago outside the door. I don't understand. Oh, I do, sir. This man is obviously an imposter. You can still escape if Mr. you go... Mr. Conklin, hurting you is the furthest thing for my mind. Why, while I was in jail, I became a completely honest man. But seven years ago, you swore you'd kill me when you got out. Yes, and if you're so honest, the only thing you can do is to keep your word. <laughs> Sir, the reason I came by today was to thank you. You came by to thank me? Sir, you're not going to believe that after what you just heard outside the door? Uh, Mr. Conklin, I'll always be grateful to you for giving me the seven best years of my life. But when I told these people I wanted to thank you, they locked me in the boiler room. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, we had to, sir. How did we know what he'd do after he thanked you? After all, you heard him threaten you. How do you know what he'll do next? Look, there's still time to escape, sir. All He's right, a... Conklin. <laughs> And then I'll break the door down. <laughs> There's still time for Mr. Boynton and me to escape. Come on, Mr. Boynton. Just a moment, Miss Brooks. <laughs> now, who would that be? Maybe Dodson has a twin brother, sir. I suppose we open the door and find out who it is, shall we? I just as soon remain in the dark if it's all the same to you. <laughs> Well, hello, Margaret. Don't play with me, you punk. <laughs> oh, it's no 
news, Mrs. Davis. I'm sure he recognizes you. Oh, I so. I had a feeling the handkerchief over my face wouldn't do much good. <laughs> Not only do I recognize you, Margaret, but I finally recognize Miss Machiavelli's little scheme. You thought you'd frighten me off the premises before Mr. Lonigan arrived, didn't you, Miss Brooks? My, what will the members of my faculty think of next? This is your faculty? <laughs> Boy, am I glad I took my high school courses by correspondence. <laughs> you haven't a thing on me. I wish I'd talk that way. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, I know all this looks bad, but we had to do something. What would we have done after you presented your revised budget to Mr. Lonergan? You would have done extremely well, Boyden, since I had revised it appreciably upward. Upward? 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 You can close your collective mouth now. <laughs> My emergency program was designed to convince Mr. Lonergan that no school could exist on our current expenditures. The revised budget is right over here on the desk. Anybody care to see it before I make one more revision? One more revision? Uh, yes, Miss Brooks. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, sir, I too have one revision to make around here. Miss Brooks, why did you break that window pane? Since the window was locked, it was the only way I could jump out. <laughs> Starring Eve Arden, Grant Starr, is produced and directed by Larry Byrne, written by Joe Killen, with a musical Wilbur Hatt. Mr. Conklin was played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Bob Rockwell, Gloria McMillan, and Mary Jane Cross. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to be with us again next Sunday at the same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. This is the CBS Radio Network.